Currently, there are 36 blood group systems. However, the most important systems are ABO and RISA systems. ABO system consists of two antigens present on the surface of red blood cells. In blood group A, there is A antigen on the surface. In blood group B, there is B antigen on the surface. In group AB, both antigens are present. While in group O, neither antigens is present. RISA system is the second most important blood group. It consists of 50 antigens, but only five are important. These are D capital, there is no D small, C capital, C small, E capital, and E small. A person who carries D antigen is known as RH positive, while a person who don't carry D antigen is known as RH negative. The prevalence of RH negative population is about 15%. RHD positive person may be homozygous or heterozygous. Homozygosity means the presence of two D genes on chromosome number one, while heterozygosity means the presence of only one RHD gene on chromosome number one. And of course, RH negative people have no D genes. In addition, there are more than 50 other minor antigens. However, only some of these are clinically important, such as Kell antigens, DOFI, and KID antigens. Fetomaternal hemorrhage is the passage of fetal blood into maternal circulation. It occurs spontaneously throughout pregnancy. However, the most significant fetomaternal hemorrhage occurs at the time of delivery. Some events could trigger fetomaternal hemorrhage, known as sensitizing events, such as miscarriage, ectopic pregnancy, and the evacuation of molar pregnancy, antipartum hemorrhage, procedures such as amniocentesis, external cephalic version, and determination of pregnancy, and also with abdominal trauma. The first cause of sensitization is fetomaternal hemorrhage. In RH negative mothers, the passage of RH positive blood will stimulate an immune response, a process known as sensitization. It firstly produces IgM antibodies, which are large and don't cross the placenta. Subsequently, it produces the smaller IgG antibodies, which cross the placenta. The first fetus is not affected by this process because sensitization usually occurs after delivery. The first antibody response develops slowly, and usually it is not detected serologically until about 15 weeks after exposure. The first antibody produced is IgM, which is large and does not cross a placenta. However, the second and subsequent pregnancies are affected. Transfusion of RH Incompatible blood is another source of sensitization. One day, this RH negative woman was a fetus who received RH positive blood from her mother, leading to sensitization, an effect known as grandmother effect. Transplacental transfer of maternal antibodies leads to hemolysis of fetal red blood cells and consequently fetal anemia develop. Severe anemia leads to hydropsifitalis. Hydropsifitalis is diagnosed by the presence of two or more of the following. Skin edema, ascites, pericardial effusion, pleural effusion. Hydrops occurs when hemoglobin less than 5 gram per dl or hematocrit is less than 15%. During first antenatal visit, identify blood group, RH status, and assess red blood cell antibodies by indirect comb test. RH negative woman with no antibodies, I mean non-sensitized woman, repeat testing at 28 weeks, and start steps of prevention of sensitization. On the other side, in RH negative woman, 
with antibodies, I mean sensitized women, start the steps of management to identify and manage fetal hemolytic disease. In RH negative unsensitized women, sensitization is prevented by administration of anti-D immunoglobulin. It is administered routinely during pregnancy and postpartum. During routine antenatal prevention, anti-D is given as a single dose of 1,500 international unit at 28 weeks or given as two doses of 500 international unit at 28 and 34 weeks. In the postpartum period, test for neonatal RH status. If the unit is RH positive, maternal administration of 500 international unit anti-D is given within 72 hours of delivery. In addition, test for fetomaternal hemorrhage, for example, with Kelly-Hauer test. For every additional 1 ml of fetal blood, 125 international unit of NTD is required to neutralize it. I mean, 500 international unit for every 4 ml of fetal blood. If the pregnancy is still birth and there is no sample to identify fetal RH status, NTD should be given. In addition, NTD is given for potentially sensitizing events. This includes bleeding in early pregnancy, such as miscarriage, which is repeated, heavy, or associated with abdominal pain, ectopic pregnancy, evacuation of molar pregnancy, antipartum hemorrhage, interventions such as amniocentesis, external cephalic version or termination of pregnancy, abdominal trauma, and intrauterine fetal death. Before 20 weeks, 250 international unit is given within 72 hours of the sensitizing event. Fetomaternal hemorrhage testing is not required. If there is a continual bleeding, give at least 250 international unit at a minimum of six weekly interval. After 20 weeks, administer 500 international unit within 72 hours of the event. Test for fetomaternal hemorrhage and to provide additional doses of anti-D if fetomaternal hemorrhage is more than 4 ml. The dose for every additional 1 ml is 125 international units. And repeat testing 2 days after intravenous anti-D or 3 days after intramuscular anti-D. If there is a continuous bleeding, administer another dose 500 international unit every 6 weeks. If there is a new event, give another 500 international units. Regarding transfusion of platelets, whenever possible, transfuse D-negative platelets to a D-negative woman of a child bearing potentials. However, in case of transfusion of D-positive platelets, 250 international units is required to neutralize 5 adult therapeutic doses of D-positive platelets. If platelet count is less than 30,000, avoid intramuscular injection. In case of inadvertent administration of D-positive blood, if the amount of blood is less than 15 ml, use the usual dose, I mean 125 international unit for every 1 ml. If more than 15 ml transfused, use a higher dose. I mean 1,500 or 2,500 international units, preferably intravenous. And they quantify the presence of D-positive red blood cells by the use of flu cytometry. 48 hours after intravenous administration or 72 hours after intramuscular administration. Further NTD should be given until there is no detectable D-positive cells in the circulation. If more than one unit of D-positive blood is transfused, consider exchange transfusion and quantify D-positive red blood cells by the use of flu cytometry 
and administer NTD to neutralize the residual red blood cells. These are the preventive steps in the non-sensitized woman. Now, what about the management steps in sensitized women? The first step is to assess the fetal RH status. Start with assessment of the father RH status. If the father is RH negative, this means the fetus is RH negative. If the father is RH positive, genotyping is required. If the father is homozygous, the fetus is RH positive. While if the father is heterozygous, the fetus may be RH positive or RH negative. Move to the next step. It's also reasonable to omit the first step and to move directly to fetal genotyping using a cell-free DNA. The fetal D antigen, C capital C small, E capital E small, can be detected by this method. It can be performed from 16 weeks for all antigens except K antigens, which is performed starting from 20 weeks. For other antigens, invasive testing may be considered if invasive testing is performed for other reasons, for example, karyotyping. The second step is to follow maternal anti-D tetra until a critical tetra is reached. Measure anti-D, anti-C small, and anti-K every four weeks up to 28 weeks, then every two weeks until delivery. For all other antigens, retesting at 28 weeks is advised. Refer to a fetal medicine specialist if the critical TET is reached, which includes anti-D more than 4 international unit per mil, anti-C small more than 7.5 international unit per mil, anti-K once detected, regardless of the level, and the presence of anti-E in addition to anti-C regardless of the level. Previous history of uh, hemolytic disease of the fetus and the newborn, unexplained severe neonatal jaundice, and the neonatal anemia requiring transfusion. And lastly, ultrasound showing features of fetal anemia is another indication for transfer to a fetal medicine specialist. The next step is screening for fetal anemia by measurements of middle cerebral artery peak systolic velocity every week. Further management is based on the middle cerebral artery peak systolic velocity. If peak systolic velocity less than 1.5 multiple of median, schedule delivery at 37 to 38 weeks. If peak systolic velocity is more than 1.5 multiple of median and the gestational age more than 35 weeks, consider delivery. However, if gestational age less than 35 weeks, Perform chordosynthesis to diagnose fetal anemia. If hematocrit is less than 30%, then intrauterine transfusion is recommended. If hematocrit more than 30%, repeat testing in one or two weeks. And lastly, I will discuss some additional points. Regarding intrauterine transfusion, Red blood cells for intrauterine transfusion should be ABO identical with the fetus if known, or blood group O if it is unknown. It should be negative for the relevant antigen. K negative, cytomegalovirus negative, irradiated and transfused within 24 hours of irradiation, and its plasma is removed to increase hematocrit up to 85%. Pregnant women with red cell antibodies who are considered at high risk of requiring blood transfusion. Take a cross-match sample at least every week. And if blood transfusion is required, 
use red cell component of the same EBO group, RH type, which is K negative and cytomegalovirus negative. Regarding the neonatal management, take a cord sample for direct anti globulin test, hemoglobin, and bilirubin level. Perform a regular assessment of hemoglobin and bilirubin. Early discharge is not advisable. Encourage breastfeeding. And remember that some infants may experience anemia persisting for a few weeks after birth. Regarding future pregnancy, if there is a history of pregnancy affected by HDFN, refer in all subsequent pregnancies to a fetal medicine specialist.